Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our service tonight. Uh, this is uh, the closest Sunday to Remembrance Day, so we'll be marking that as the theme of our evening prayer service, uh, as well as our Sunday morning service. And I'm really happy to have Eleanor back to help us pray. And uh, and welcome to Steve, uh, who also is going to help us uh, pray uh, this evening. So, so thank you for uh, Steve and Eleanor, and thank you everybody for joining us uh, in prayer. And we begin as always on page 18. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from my ways like God's sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have not done those things which we ought to have done. And there is no help in us, but you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. The glory of thy holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And, O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And our psalm for this evening's service is Psalm number 29, found on page 362. Psalm 29, page 362, and we'll say this psalm responsibly by the half verse. Ascribe unto the Lord, O ye mighty. 
Ascribe unto the Lord worship and strength. Give unto the Lord the honor due unto his name. Worship the Lord with holy worship. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. It is the glorious God that maketh the thunder, even the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedar trees. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh Lebanon to skip like a calf. And Syria like a young ox. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. Yea, the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to bring forth young, and strippeth bare the forests. In his temple doth everything speak of his honor. The Lord sitteth above the water flood. And the, and the Lord, Lord remaineth the king forever. The Lord shall give strength unto his people. The Lord shall, shall give breath. Blessing of peace. Oh, no. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. And glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll now have the first uh, lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the second chapter. <clears throat> this is the word which Isaiah sent of Amos. Sorry, Isaiah, son of Amos, received in a vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be set over all other mountains, lifted high above the hills, and the nations shall come streaming to it, and many people shall come and say, Come, let us climb up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For instruction issues from Zion, and out of Jerusalem comes the word of the Lord. He will judge between nations, arbiter among many people. They shall bear, beat their swords into mattocks, and their spears into pruning knives. Nation shall not lift a sword against nation nor ever again be trained for the war. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page 21, we say the Magnificat by the half verse. <clears throat> my soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him. Throughout all generations, he has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat. And has exalted the humble by me. He hath filled the hungry with good things. And, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall. And we'll have our second lesson. <clears throat> the second lesson is from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, 
his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page 22, we say the love to Midas by the half verse. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. According, According to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Which thou, thou hast prepared, prepared before, before the face of all people. To be a light to light to the Gentiles. And to be the glory of thy people Israel. And glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be of the Lord. World of the Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And, O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the king. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed. 
Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of thoughts uh, on our readings uh, and on the day that we're marking uh, in advance, of course, uh, in Remembrance Day. Um, I think, uh, well, I don't think, I know that the theme of peace and the importance of peace uh, is really on my heart uh, this year. Of course, it always should be, every day. Um, even in the prayer book, versicles and responses that we just finished praying, we say, give us peace, O Lord, and not in now. We actually pray in our time, Lord. Give us peace in our time, O oh Lord. And ever more mightily defend us. Um, so obviously it's always appropriate uh, to be thinking about peace. But but I've been thinking about peace, I guess, with a broken heart and, and perhaps with anger. Uh, on Thursdays, we have a small Eucharist service. And it's been my become my habit to to sort of practice on Thursday for Sunday sermon, which probably isn't a very good practice, but but it's it's what I do, and it's been it's been really good because people there will give me feedback, and um, and and it is a time for me to think about it and to air some thoughts, and muse about some thoughts, and uh, also the Thursday Bible study that follows the service we do the exact same thing we talk about the readings and i almost always get good ideas for my sermon from our study group uh but this thursday my musing or my sermon or whatever you want to call it was really pretty pretty angry pretty pretty discouraged uh, pretty hopeless in the sense that it just seems that human beings are warlike creatures uh, and we can't seem to escape the evil of of war and i went on and on and on about that giving examples and so on and but the primary reason why i'm feeling discouraged or or or, or perhaps a healthier way is feeling like i need to be a, a voice in the wilderness, if you will, and a strong voice, and that our congregation uh, and all followers of Jesus need to be peacemakers. It's because, and I, I don't mean to be melodramatic, but just about literally every day the face of war comes to CCSJ. Uh, it, they're knocking on the door or they're phoning on our phone, uh, Ukrainian refugees from the horrible war that's going on there they're almost always young women with little children who have fled their homes their livelihoods their family their husbands and in most cases their husbands their fathers their brothers and other family members who are staying there either to fight or to take care of people or they just didn't want to leave home but there are always new people come into our food bank hungry because they've escaped a war. Uh, they escaped for the, their safety, particularly the safety of their children. And now they need help getting started a new life in Canada. And they're resilient. They're, they're amazingly resilient and even happy. But you can see behind their, their smiles 
and their uh, appreciative words, uh, a lot, an enormous amount of pain and hurt and worry and anger uh, and disruption. And so we we need peace. We want peace. And I and it's a godly dream. People may call it a fantasy, but it is a godly dream. It is a godly passion. And therefore, if it's a godly dream and it's a godly passion, then it's not just a dream. It must someday come true. And there's a beautiful, uh, the prophet Isaiah he has this uh, a wonderful image. And it's not only his image, but the prophet Micah says basically the same thing. Uh, God will call all the nations. God will arbitrate. God will be the peacemaker, the peace bringer. And the weapons of war will be turned into instruments of agriculture. <laughs> and of course, that would probably be more meaningful in that society because because agriculture was so important. Well, it is now too, but we're such, we're so separated from it. But for them, uh, gardens that produced food that could be consumed was literally life-giving. And uh, in, in, in contrast to weapons of war that, that took life. And part of God's dream and part of God's vision uh, that the uh, the sword will be turned into pruning forks and plowshares uh, is that they, is that we will we will not learn war anymore. Uh, S- Steve's translation that he read from said we would not I think practice war anymore. We wouldn't want to reinforce how to do it and to do it well and. And Jesus, Jesus is clearly saying in the gospel reading, uh, the Beatitudes, he, he just lays it right out there. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will inherit, you know, the kingdom of God. And so many other of the Beatitudes are peacemaking stances, purity of heart, humbleness. Uh, Justice, passion for righteousness and and justice, um, thirsting for justice and righteousness. Uh, before we started recording this, Steve and Eleanor and I were chatting. We were looking at the letter of James, and uh, Steve was making the really good case that that when James says, you know, that faith without works is dead, it's not living. I mean, one of the ways that we live our faith, that one of the ways that we put our faith to work is to be peacemakers. And, and if, you, if you go on in the letter of James, he talks about, you know, as long as you're selfish and you're conceited and you have selfish ambition and so on and so forth and these attitudes, then you're just going to get conflict and it's going to grow, it's going to escalate and you'll have wars. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, it's it's as simple as that. Although, obviously, we know it's very complicated. But the image that, that Isaiah has is of a day that we believe will come true. When the lion will lie down with the lamb. When the weapons of war will be turned into instruments of agriculture. And there will be no war and we won't want to learn it. We'll forget it. It'll be out of our minds. It'll be out of our hearts. It'll be a strange, ridiculous thing. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And Jesus is calling us to be peacemakers, to seek righteousness and justice. I uh, I was at the cafe church Thursday night. And it ended at about quarter to nine, uh, maybe close to nine. And I turned on the, as I turned on the car, the radio came on and it was CBC program about uh, called Ideas. This is really interesting program, uh, usually. And they were the theme of that night. I just got the tail end, the conclusion, 
1913, the year 1913. And I didn't hear it, but from the conclusion, it seems that the scholars had been saying and arguing that there were many, many things happening in 1913, which uh, created the world, the society, at least the Western world, and much of the rest of the world uh, into the state uh, that was was fit for war. There was just all of these social, political, economic, cultural, religious, all these factors were kind of coming together in these dark clouds. And it was sort of the perfect scenario for this horrible First World War to start and to continue uh, and mercifully to finally end. Um, and then they were making the case that a lot of the scholars were feeling like 2022 20, <laughs> feels like a, a, a year where there are so many things, a hinge year, so many things coming together that I think they were saying we should beware and we should do our best not to have 2023 be in 1914. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the prophet Isaiah, and I, to, to be really honest, I need to get to look into the commentaries and what the scholars say, because the prophet, the book of Isaiah covers many years in the history of Israel. But my, if my memory serves me correctly, the early chapters of Isaiah, uh, the people of Judah are in okay shape. But uh, the prophet is saying, there's a lot of things going on here that are like a hinge. And things are going to come unglued. <laughs> uh, it's sort of like a 1913 scenario. The, the geopolitics of the nations around Judah and and the immoral behavior and unrighteousness and and um, idolatry and 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 a heartless careless attitude towards the poor and the marginal all of these factors are starting to build up and and Isaiah is saying um, in the midst of this hinge year uh, and or time, I don't know if we could say it, it was just a year, but time says, in the end, we look to what God will do. Uh, and it will be uh, ultimate peace. And Jesus, uh, the New Testament speaks a lot about and the new age or the age to come and, and the age or the day of the Lord and so on and so forth. It uses that kind of language a lot. And we believe that in Jesus, everything, all the evil, all the social, political, uh, moral, uh, spiritual things that are so dark and so dreadful and that leads us to war, uh, they meet in Christ on the cross. And in his resurrection, uh, they've been defeated. And so in that sense, in that sense, for us as followers of Jesus, we don't look to, to the time before the end of Judah, the destruction of Judah, the first destruction of Judah. We don't look at 1913. We don't look at 19 or 2022. We look to the day, the first Good Friday, uh, the Good Friday. Well, if you will, all of history came together in Christ, and Christ has had an ultimate victory. And so that's why we can be peacemakers that's why we can be uh thirsty for righteousness that's why uh, we can have a pure heart uh, even in the the times that we are facing right now 
And I think that's our hope. And when we fight for peace, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> when we, or maybe sometimes literally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, just opened up a huge can of worms there, didn't I? But when we work for peace, when we pray for peace, we do so knowing that it will happen. And we are on the winning side, despite the evidence around us. So, so anyway, I hope that was a lot more than a few thoughts, a couple of thoughts. But I hope these musings, these continued musings, uh, will, will encourage you to be peacemakers. And will encourage you, to, encourage you to work for a day when we won't learn war anymore. And we'll have beautiful gardens, food for all of us. Amen. So we just take a moment of silence to give thanks to God for those who gave their lives in the First and Second World War, Korean conflict, Afghanistan war, other, other uh, peacekeeping missions. And we think of people in our own, in our church and in our communities that are from different parts of the world. When we remember them and we honor the people they wish to remember. Uh, and I want to particularly remember Jim LaForce, who is the last Second World War veteran alive at Christ Church St. James. And one of the few alive around the world. So I want to thank Jim and take a moment of silence to honor Jim and all his comrades. And then uh, after a minute of silence, uh, Steve will lead us in a prayer. A brief thought before I start, if I may, Father David, I hope that's acceptable. I just was thinking, first of all, as we look at the Beatitudes and your focus on blessed be the peacemakers, it does seem to me that all the other Beatitudes stem from blessed be the peacemakers, which are, who are us? And it's not simply enough to let God and exactly. hope that God will change things, but that we are to work towards it. Exactly. Uh, and in that regard, and uh, I'm going to do a, a pray what is now called a prayer for Christian life in the BAS, traditionally known as the Prayer of St. Francis. Because it is a call to action. And in fact, it's a call to peace. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we not, we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. In God our Father, your Son is our peace, and his cross the sign of reconciliation. 
help us to share the broken bread, to bring together what is scattered and to bind up what is wounded, that Christ may bring in the everlasting kingdom his peace, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. And now we give you thanks because you have anointed your son as the Messiah, the light of the nations, and revealed him as the hope of all who thirst for righteousness and peace. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping the Lord uh, with us uh, tonight. And thanks to Steve and to Eleanor. Very nice. God bless.